Welcome to week four progress report on the rolling restoration of my 240D. You can see I'm still working on the sunroof. And the more I got into this, the more I realized there's a lot of things I can show you viewers about these sunroofs. You know, I get these emails all the time. In fact, I got one last week. Hey, my sunroof is not working. Can you tell me what I need to do to fix it? Can you imagine trying to answer that in an email? Tell someone how to fix their sunroof and they have, haven't even told you what's wrong. I mean, well, could it be a fuse? <laughs> could be a burned out motor, could be a jam cable, could be this, could be that. So I'm going to work on this probably over the next week, trying to develop a troubleshooting video showing all the different things that could go wrong. And then I've decided to take all my sunroof products and put them together in a complete packet. This would include how to replace the seals, how to get the sunroof out, how to lubricate everything. Remember, this lubrication thing is a big issue. And it's very obvious that if this was left to go, we'd have problems with this sunroof due to lack of lubrication. And we've got some other issues now. We can't get seals. We cannot get a new front seal anymore. Uh, the last few aftermarket brands we were getting weren't fitting properly. The side seals cannot be obtained anywhere. Now there's someone making some out of Europe, but we've heard reports they're, they're not all that good. So. Well, these, uh, some of you are wondering, where did you get these cans? Well, we've been hoarding about three sets of these for the last three years for our own cars. <laughs> so guess what? White Lightning is going to get two new side sunroof seals. So I'm digging around in here and I'm pulling out this side seal and the track assembly. I mentioned that in the last video, you know, it's amazing. These aren't rusty. That's very unusual. But look at that. Look at the difference between the new seal and the old seal. But I've got a lot of junk in here. I've got dirt, leaves, all kinds of things. Fortunately, no rust. You know, I may include some miracle paint in that complete kit. I haven't decided yet. But you would get uh, a couple of manuals, some videos, and some products that would help you fix your own sunroof. We're talking about the sunroofs up to 1985 that don't tilt. I've got another video series of five videos on how to fix the tilting sunroofs. They're much more difficult to work on than these older style that just go back and forth like on this 240D. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to vacuum all this out right now and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to test the water drains. That's really important when you get one of these old Mercedes uh, you want to test the water drains and there's a fairly easy way to do it and I'll show you that shortly. Let me show you how I test these sunroof drains. There's a drain that runs out of the front and goes this way and there's a drain back in here that goes out that way. So now this is very important you understand this. A lot of people think the seals keep the water out. That's not the purpose of the seals. Uh, water's going to get in there regardless. The purpose of the seals is to prevent wind noise and junk from getting in your car. So I just get a gallon of water in a jug. You don't want to use a hose because you'll end up spraying it all over the place. It's bad enough with a jug. And I'm going to just pour it in on the outside of the track. And I'll just let it fill up. Now what you're watching for is how rapidly the water goes away. Now I'm seeing water running forward and water running backward. Notice how quickly I'm pouring it. Not too fast, but fast enough that any rainwater would run away. Now if you start overfilling right away, then you know one of the drains is plugged. Then you can stop and look. This is draining out pretty slow out the front here. I've still got standing water in here even after that. Well, it looks like the way I've got it parked now, it's not running all the way back and running out the back. I'm going to have to jack the front of the car up. But I am concerned about this front drain. It doesn't seem to be running out as fast as I would like it to. But I'm pouring at a pretty good rate. Now I'm going to bring the camera over here and you can see how fast it's running out the front here on the left side. And it's already starting to improve a little bit. You can see it dripping out there pretty fast. Okay, that's much better. Before it was just kind of dripping, but you got three nice streams. 
So if I thought it was plugged, I could go ahead and run some compressed air in a tube down there, my special tool for that, but I'm just going to keep pouring water. Get that rinsed out real well. That's disappearing much more quickly, and it's really nice not to have rust in these channels, which is so typical on these cars. If you do find rust, you're going to have to treat it with miracle paint, or you're going to have a problem down the road. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the same to the right side. Let's see how it does on the right side when I start pouring into the track assembly. Okay, what do we got? Not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and clean the area with some of the Dawn degreaser and rinse it out using uh, the gallon jug again. Now this right side, it kind of plugged itself up a little bit after I cleaned it, so it must have got some junk down in there. So I used my sunroof cleaning tool, and I'm going to shove it right down in the hole, and right at the top I'll start blasting, and then keep working it in there and blast it all the way down. Okay. You can kind of see how far down in I got the tubing. Now I'll grab the water and let's see if it's running better now. So I think it's always a good idea to run compressed air. Oh, what a difference. You know, it was spilling on my seat before. Let's take another look at it running down below now. Okay, now I'm pouring it pretty fast. And you can hear it gurgling, so that's how it should come out if the drain is really clean. And I can pour water up along the front edge of the air dam just to make sure it's routing out to the corner. Sure enough, it's still flowing. Because sometimes you'll get leaves and junk up in front of the air dam and it'll plug it and keep it from moving off to the side. As you can see, the front drains get most of the work. But when you want to test the rear drains, you're going to have to get the front end up beyond level. So you can just drive it up a slope like I've done here or jack it up in the front. Now watch where it comes out. This is kind of a surprise. You see it's coming out right in here. So you want to check both sides. Uh, trying to clean these out or blow air through them is near impossible. I don't even want to go there. Fortunately, I haven't had any big problems with rear drains on the W123. This should give you a clue. If you have drips of water dripping on you from around the sunroof panel, when you have your car parked with the front end up, you have plugged rear drains. If you have the back end up and you have water dripping along that front edge on you, then your front drains are plugged. What you're looking at is this little piece of carpet that goes on the center console and the W123 right between the front seats. And the condition is typical. And after 30 years, it's going to get dirty. And this has got all kinds of stuff on there. Who knows what this is? But I thought I'd bring out my favorite cleaner again today, my Don Professional Heavy Duty Degreaser. And let's see what it'll do to this carpet. I know this looks really bad, but I've seen some amazing results on these type of carpets. They're tough carpets, but if some of these stains are just too bad. I'm going to have to resort to this carpet here. Now this is out of an earlier 1977 and 1980 W123. It has a different carpet pattern, but I can use that for the time being until I find something else. So the first thing <laughs> is let's soak up these spots. There's no sense in cleaning the whole thing unless these really bad spots are going to clean up. Sometimes if something real hot gets placed on this carpet, it'll melt the carpet, and then there's, there's not much you can do. Okay. 
Man, that's tough right in there. Almost feels like glue. All right, let's not give up yet. I'm gonna soak that up and then I'm gonna go get a stiffer brush. I might even get a stainless steel brush that I can rub in there very lightly to break up that whatever it is. Now you have to be careful. I'm just gonna kind of go with the grain here. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's one dirty carpet, folks. Okay, I think that section right there is going to be savable. It's going to take a little more work. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and clean the rest of this and I'll go rinse it off and then probably attack it again. But let's take a look at this one right here, this dirty edge. And there's some more goop right in there, real hard stuff. bad. All right, now let's flip it around here and we'll just do the rest of it, kind of see how it looks. Looks like the edges are cleaning up real well. You can tell it's already looking a lot better. When I first saw this, I thought I was just going to have to toss it because that's when I went and looked around my used parts stash and came up with this piece here. But look at this. This has got some promise. <laughs> as long as you're willing to give it some elbow grease. I just love the way this Don degreaser foams up. Okay, I think you've seen enough. This carpet looks really good except for that spot, that spot, and that spot. I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna work these some more with the brush. And then I'll rinse this off and let it dry and come back and show you the finished product. And then I'll let you vote. Should I keep this in the car or not? Now I'm getting into some really picky detailing. Uh, you know, I've seen this a number of times. I've never really attempted to restore it. But that has to do with the red color on these W123, particularly the later model seatbelt latches. You see how red this passenger side is? I don't know why the driver's side always gets faded. Maybe it's because of the acids on the hand. But, you know, that isn't very attractive. This is very nice looking. I have no idea if it's going to work, <laughs> but let's give it a try. A little scotch bright pad and that Don degreaser that I've come to like so much. We're going to scrub the dead top off that plastic. Now, if you read the directions on that heavy duty degreaser, you'll see it says do not soak plastic in it. Well, that doesn't mean you can't rub dead plastic off with it because it does have something in it that's strong enough to affect plastic. So I'm not going to soak this in the degreaser, but I am scrubbing it with my 
favorite purple scotch bright pad and then we're going to wipe it off yeah there's some red so it is taking some of the plastic off which of course is what we want all right now i'm going to do it again any of you 123 owners out there wish you had a bright red latch mechanism i know some of you are laughing hey can't just get the engine fixed and drive the thing don't worry about all this stuff <laughs> yeah but where would the fun be then somebody's going to agree with me making it beautiful is well worth it we'll keep the motivation high every time i get in the car and go to get my seat belt connected i will have a big smile on my face Look, see it's taken off some of the red. So I'll let that dry off and I'll wipe it with some water and then I'll probably put some protectant on it. But look at that, very nice. Okay, I also spent a few hours this past week gluing all this wood on. You know, a couple of these outer pieces had fallen off and these were loose and really warped. So I had some fun getting these on and getting them to stick. It takes a, a special procedure and we have a special glue. If you want more information about how to do this, uh, you can just visit my website. I'll put a link in the description below this video. But look at how nice that looks. Once again, that's what it looked like before and uh, this is what it looks like now. So another project checked off the list. I told you in the last episode that I was going to start removing all the door panels on white lightning here and servicing everything inside the doors. So I pulled this left rear panel off. Look at this. This is what you call an unmolested, untouched door panel. Look at that plastic. Plastic's never been off. And just look at the condition of the inside of the door panel. All those pins are in perfect condition. There's no evidence of wetness down here. So that's a real joy when you open up a door like that. So I'm going to be pulling the plastic off. And I do have instructions on how to make new plastic. But if I can, I'll save the original plastic. Especially if it's in this good a condition. that isn't that nice inside but it still needs work look at this grease look at how old and gummy that grease is and you know we've got these problems with all these nuts that like to loosen up on the inside of these panels and we've got lubrication everywhere so you know we'll be talking a lot about my lubrication kit next week and the week to follow because the next two episodes we're going to really focus on lubrication all the lubrication points on these w123s and when you should do it and usually you do it when you get one of these cars because they're so neglected but what i decided to do i i just decided this uh, yesterday is we have a lot of different lubrication kits we have the main kit here we have a kit to lubricate uh, the door hinges we have a kit to lubricate the antenna and we have some other miscellaneous uh, kits including spare lubrication so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all our lube kits and put together in one service package now the reason i haven't done that in the past is because you know it gets a little expensive and people might not want to buy everything but at least if you're just getting into this if you're just getting into these old mercedes and you want to learn about lubricating everything, uh, this will be a cost savings if you buy this complete service package that I'm going to put together this week. So I will be going into all these doors next week. We'll be talking specifically about <laughs> certain points that fail and why they fail. Now this is interesting. You know, last week I showed you this broken handle and I had a guy comment that, well, uh, that's a design flaw and they're weak and they all break. Well, there's, there's a reason they break, and I'm going to show you that in next week's episode. So you'll get a kick out of this when you start finding out what you can do inside a door. Who says, whoever works inside a door anyway? 
Well, we're going to go into door maintenance in the next episode, and you're going to learn everything about the inside of these W123 doors. You know, just like that door panel, every time I open up something on this car, I go, Ooh, wow, <laughs> never seen anything quite like that. And so is the case with these channels here for the sunroof drains. I have never seen any this clean on a W123. And take a look at this air dam. Anybody want to guess what I did to detail this side out? Look at what it looked like originally. <laughs> you know what I use there, right? <laughs> you should know by now. Okay, so I'm going to start tackling some of these issues. I mentioned earlier that I want to do a complete troubleshooting video. And that'll take a person through every single thing that might go wrong. It's not going to be a repair video. It's going to be a troubleshooting video. I have all these resources already done to repair and fix everything. And what I decided to do is put them all together as a service package. This would be all my manuals, all my PDFs, parts, lube kits, everything that you would need to get into your sunroof, not tilting, but back and forth, and get it fixed. Now, I have to admit, sometimes they can't be fixed, and I'll talk about that in the troubleshooting video. But the next thing I'm going to do is pull this cable out. A lot of people will go to all this trouble, but they won't lubricate the cable. And the cable gets all that gummy grease down in there, and it's the cable that makes the sunroof run so slowly. So you'll be as interested as I am to see the condition of this cable when we pull it out next week. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for next Monday night.